Good morning. It is Thursday, September 17th at 9 o'clock, and this is our first of two uh, budget meetings that we're going to have for Walker County this year to present the budget to the citizens. We're here at the Walker County Civic Center this morning. We wanted to do a meeting here in the center of the county to allow citizens to be able to come out and not have to go all the way to Lafayette, and we wanted to try to break this up to see if we had people that wanted to come out uh, in the morning time instead of having to come out in the evening busy schedule so uh, we appreciate uh, mike smith setting the facility up for us and having everything nice and so uh, hats off to him for a great job getting this set up so at this time we're going to uh, follow our agenda we're going to do our invocation and then we're going to uh, have our pledge to the flag so we're going to pray at this time Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this uh, great day. Lord, just uh, thank you for allowing us to be in such a great county and a great state and in a great country. And Lord, we just pray for our leadership of our country. Uh, just be with our president and our Congress and all of the leaders in Washington, D.C. Lord, just be with our, our military and protect our men and women that serve this great country. And Lord, we just pray for those that... Uh, are in the pathway of the hurricane, Lord, that you, uh, that you protect them and, and keep them safe and provide their needs. And Lord, just uh, be with us as we come to this time to, uh, to review this budget or answer any questions that anyone may have. And Lord, we just uh, are honored to be here, an honor to serve, and honored that uh, you have been so good to us here in Walker County and have provided for our needs and have allowed us to maintain a uh, a balanced budget and, and had your hand and oversight in, in helping us get our, our debt reduced and allowing us to, uh, to build some reserve funds and to give us solid financial footing, Lord. And it was all your will. And Lord, we just thank you for, for what you've done for us there. Lord, just be with us as we come to this time of meeting. And Lord, just we pray that everything that's said and done here today will honor and glorify you. In your name we pray. Amen. We're going to stand and pledge to our, our American flag. We'll also do our Georgia flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Then our Georgia state flag back on the other side. I pledge allegiance to the Georgia flag and to the principles for which it stands. Wisdom, justice, and moderation. Thank you. you may be seated. <clears throat> okay. Put my glasses on here so I can see the fine print. But uh, on our budget this year, we have re released this on our website. So there is a 16-page summary of our general fund. And then we also have a separate... Uh, enterprise fund and special revenues fund that is separate and we'll go through that and make some highlights but uh, this year we are projecting some of our revenues to be down uh, property taxes are are down just a little bit we're projecting because uh, we know people have had some uh, some job losses and things so we're projecting our property taxes down just slightly uh, we are projecting that our fine and forfeitures are going to be down probably somewhere around about three hundred thousand dollars due to our court system not being able to uh, to do much through the pandemic so our fines and forfeitures through our uh, court systems through our judicial system they've had a, a hard time being able to move court cases forward due to not being able to do jury trials and all here over the last several months so Last year, our adopted budget for our general fund was $30,300,000 even. Uh, this year, we're projecting down at $28,364,000. And also, part of that revenue reduction is the reduction of the uh, what's listed on here as, let's see what, what category it's in. Um, uh, Uh, charges for services, uh, <clears throat> 34000 is the line item for that, charges for services. Uh, that uh, funding that we've had over the last uh, couple of years for the Erlanger uh, reduction debt. So that uh, is not being uh, charged at this time because that has sunsetted. 
and we're going to be able to get that uh, completed. And so there's uh, about a million and a half dollars there of revenue that we're not going to have. And so that's, in essence, a million and a half dollars less of your tax dollars that you're having to submit to county government. So we've been able to reduce that. Uh, in this summary, it does break out everything by division. So you, uh, those of you that look at this online, you'll have your government body, your elections, uh, your poll workers. Uh, it has the accounting department uh, inter and the uh, in-house attorney. Our data processing and MSI, uh, which is basically our IT infrastructure. And uh, Walker County had been greatly behind over the years in infrastructure for computers and servers and primarily um, security. And so we've had to make quite an investment into that. We have uh, worked with uh, some partners at EPB in Chattanooga and have been able to move uh, servers off-site to get them into a secure data center uh, instead of having servers sitting in closets and back rooms. So we had uh, I think about 30 servers now at EPB where we have a lot of redundancy, uh, backup, and the protection of their data center from hacking and spam and uh, malicious wear. So that's one reason why we've had quite a significant uh, increase over several years into our data processing. Uh, you'll see our employee health clinic, which used to be in-house several years ago that was actually housed at the commissioner's office. Uh, that wasn't the, the best environment to be doing medical care. Uh, just The building just really wasn't set up to accommodate that. And so we were able to partner with CHI Memorial uh, with their two locations, one in Lafette and the one in Chickamauga, and they were able to offer us six-day-a-week service and also to be able to uh, prescribe medications so we were not having to keep medications and have a pharmacy in-house. And so but doing all of that, it actually um, saved the county about $100,000 a year and was able to give better health care service to our employees and also give them six day a week service and after hours, I think they're open until about seven o'clock, so that's been a good relationship. Our tax commissioner, tax assessor's broken out, board of equalization is all broken out separately. And in all these breakouts, you'll see a line item on all of these for uh, personnel services and employee benefits. So that is a combination of their uh, salaries or, or hourly wage, but also all of the taxes and uh, uh, health care and retirement and all those things are into that number. And then you have any other, uh, under that is purchase contracts or services. A lot of times these are vendor contracts or uh, services that are provided for those departments. And then we have supplies and then any capital outlay and then it would give a subtotal for each one of these uh, department uh, categories. Uh, then you have uh, the board equalization, uh, general building uh, and plant. This is what it takes to manage and maintain all of our, our buildings and infrastructure. Uh, we have about 68, I believe it is, county actual building structures that we have to maintain and that's on about 40 different pieces of property. And so it takes quite a bit to uh, to maintain and upgrade these things. We've had to replace a lot of heating and air systems. We have a lot of our units that are, are aging out that are 20, 25 years of service life. They've been great units. They performed well, but they're just ended life. Uh, working on uh, roofs every single year. I, I don't know when I came in office if there was a roof that wasn't leaking. I think just about every roof that we had uh, was leaking and we still have roofs leaking and we're still having to put buckets out to catch water but we have taken the position that we're not going to create debt and we're going to pay as we go and as we have the um, the funds and the cash flow and have it in our budget we're going to work on infrastructure as we go uh, we're currently uh, doing some upgrades over at our defects facility uh, we put a roof on that building that was a roof was original to that building uh, it was built uh, in the early 90s and all of, all 16 heating and air units on top of the roof were all original and so we have replaced all those this summer and now we're doing some paint and carpet in that building uh, we've got some work going on here today actually a couple of air handlers uh, hvac units that have gone out on us just end of service we're replacing Replaced one last week at the health department, replaced two at the courthouse the week before, uh, putting a new roof on the health department in the next two weeks, and also doing some work at the uh, 
Rossville Athletic Center. So there's always building work going on. So that's why it takes quite a sum of money to try to get our buildings back up to speed. Uh, the Mars uh, Weatherford House in Lafette, uh, we have expenses there because the county does own that facility. Our records management, our uh, general administration, uh, Superior Court is part of our budget. Uh, the clerk of the Superior Court, district attorney, uh, state court, state solicitor, magistrate court, probate court, juvenile court, public defense, uh, code enforcement. So you can see there's a lot of different departments here that we have to fund for. A lot of times people don't realize how broad and how diverse local government is. Uh, code enforcement, animal control, and then under our sheriff's department, their budget is broken out into uh, several different divisions. So if you're looking at that, uh, law enforcement uh, administration, you have your criminal investigation, uh, the DTF, uh, the uniform patrol, they have jail operations and the CHAMPS programs teaching kids about drugs and alcohol abuse. They have a training budget. Uh, the sheriff's office and, and building, they have uh, expenses we're maintaining basically on the inside of the jail. Uh, court services, the bailiff. Our ambulance service, uh, we have to give a subsidy every year for our ambulance service. That's uh, $250,000 a year that's been paid out to subsidize to be able to provide ambulance service. That's one of the responsibilities of county government. Uh, the corner uh, in our county, the animal shelter, emergency management, our highways and streets administration, uh, closure and post-closure care of our landfills in our budget, our maintenance shop uh, where we work on all the county vehicles and equipment has to be in our budget, uh, public health administration, this is funding for our health department that we contribute with, with the state, uh, welfare administration, there's funding there to uh, to help people that, um, that, that may pass away that has no family, no money, no anything, and sometimes we have to help and assist them in their final uh, burial expenses. Our, um, we give a, a contribution each year to our Children's Crisis Center. Uh, we also uh, have additional funding for our DFACs where we provide when they bring children in and they come in and maybe they don't have clothes and hygiene supplies and things that they need that the board at the health, uh, excuse me, at DFACS can take those dollars and invest in our children. Our DFACS building plan operation, uh, Meals on Wheels, the Meals on Wheels program, there's federal funding that goes into that, but we also have uh, expense that we pay to help feed our seniors. Also the Senior Citizen Center in Lafette is on and uh, maintained by the county. Uh, so we have that, our Civic Center where we are here today, uh, we have recreational, we have agriculture, uh, historic preservation, our library administration. Our library is something that's very, very important to our community. Uh, they got a few years ago where the libraries were struggling to even stay open 30 hours a week. And so now we have our libraries we're, with our general fund and also using some of our COVID funds. Our libraries are currently open seven days a week and we're open 70 hours a week. So that's just um, phenomenal that we've been able to do that because that provides a lot of access to the internet for folks. Uh, we have a lot of areas in our county where uh, we don't have access to internet due to the rural terrain. And so we have, in all three of our public libraries, we have uh, broadband fiber internet connections, we have computers, we have tablets and uh, Chromebooks and different things that people can use or check out and utilize or bring your own device. And we also uh, have teachers that come and tutor. You can do tutoring sessions with teachers. So we wanted the, the three libraries, the one in Rossville, Chickamauga, and Lafette, to be hubs of the community for learning and also access to the internet. You have people that are looking for jobs that need to apply online. Uh, even before the pandemic, many people to apply for jobs, you had to do that online or to apply for unemployment benefits, it's online. So we wanted to get our libraries open seven days a week to provide that to the community since everyone's on different schedules. Our county agent, this is our collaboration with the University of Georgia for our agriculture extension. They do a phenomenal job for us in our community, helping our, our ag community. Uh, forestry service, we have to pay every year uh, to provide additional insurance and protection for forestry for forest fires, our planning and zoning, economic development, our debt reduction service, and other financing that we use to, re to reduce debt and also 
to offset uh, some of our um, uh, enterprise funds from time to time. Speaking of those, those enterprise funds uh, and special, special revenue funds, our, our law library, there's funding that goes in through court fees into the law library to maintain that. Uh, juvenile court supervision. Uh, one of the big items is our emergency 911 center. It's one thing I wanted to mention today is we are doing a major upgrade currently at our 911 center. Uh, our good friends and partners in Whitfield County uh, is allowing us to borrow their command bus. And so they're going to let us use that for a couple of weeks. We're going to park it out here on the parking lot and we're going to shut down our entire 911 uh, data center and move that equipment and personnel to the command bus and over a period of a couple of weeks our 911 personnel will be answering all the 911 calls for Walker County sitting out here in a command bus. And so that's going to allow us to make the upgrades to the 911 center. Uh, we're upgrading our computer systems, our consoles, our phone system, and while we've got the center down, we're going in and replacing the carpet and updating the lighting and doing some things to um, get our 911 center up to where we need to be for emergency response and for public safety. That is the nerve center and the hub of our community when it comes to public safety. And we want to have the best of the best to give the best protection to our citizens. And so our 911 center had not had a lot of upgrades in about 20 years. And so we had been kind of behind where we needed to be there from a technology standpoint and a speed to service for technology that's out there. So. Uh, you're going to see some, uh, some changes there. Uh, if you come by the Civic Center here and see a big bus and it says Whitfield County on it, uh, anybody that you know in Whitfield County and, and leadership or government there, be sure and thank them for allowing us to borrow that bus because we don't have one of those yet. We need one, but uh, they've been so gracious to let us utilize that, and we are so thankful for that. Uh, our fire and rescue services are in this... Uh, Enterprise fund, since we have a separate fire fee, our fire department continues to do a phenomenal job under Blake Hodges' leadership in managing their budget and funds that has allowed us to expand now to seven full-time fire stations. When I came in office, there were only three full-time fire stations, and we've been able to uh, keep a very modest budget and deploy our personnel across seven stations. We just recently in August expanded to that seventh station up in Fairview where we actually open station seven, seven days a week, 24 seven. And we had a recruit class and got those guys trained. And so they answered their first call within like 20 minutes of uh, being activated, had a structure fire up in that community. So our fire department and first responders uh, do a phenomenal job for our community. Uh, there's multiple grants that come in. Some of them are judicial grants, public safety, the sheriff's department. So there's some grant funding that comes in. And a lot of those grant fundings are 100% are or little to no matching. Uh, through this, too, let's see, we have um, our landfill operation. Uh, we, uh, we've worked real hard on our landfill. We're working on our construction demolition expansion to start on the next sale. The sale we have now is just about full. Hopefully we'll have our final permitting approval on that before the end of this year so we can start in that uh, as soon as possible to expand that uh, sale operation so we don't completely run out of space. But we have made great headways there keeping uh, pretty much a, a zero balance budget at our landfill. When I came in office it was losing over $550,000 a year and we're uh, bouncing around break-even point just about every year now. Our uh, transportation service, which is a very, very important part of our community, and we are uh, working hard to get all of our plans in place to expand our transit service to seven days a week. Uh, there's a lot of our industry that uh, need workers. We have our citizens that need jobs. Uh, some of them are in the situation where if they had a job, they could buy a car. If they had a car, they could get a job. And so we need to be able to provide a more robust community transit service to move people to and from employment. But in order to do that, we need to offer that service seven days a week because many of these employers that have mass numbers of job openings are open seven days a week and many of them are working 24 hours a day. So we're gonna get our transit service expanded. Also, this will allow for people 
to have transit service on Saturday and Sunday if they need to be able to go to a community event, or want to go to church. We've not been able to offer that service in the past on Saturday and Sunday. This will allow us to do that once we get this going. Uh, we still have our Mountain Cove Farm operations, which is listed under special facilities. Uh, it's been a tough year at Mountain Cove Farm with the pandemic and the reduction of our uh, people coming in to stay, but uh, we do have a good team there and we continue to maintain that facility and still having weddings there. So uh, our special uh, revenue and um, uh, enterprise fund is $8,921,573. That's just a little bit uh, under where we were last year by about $30,000. So we do have a balanced budget for that. We do have a balanced budget on our general fund at $28,364,000. So these summary budgets are online. If anyone has any questions about these uh, that's not here today, we will be having another public meeting on the fourth Thursday of this month at the uh, Annex 3 in Lafette where we have our regular scheduled meeting. So we're invited to come to that. That'll be at six o'clock on the fourth Thursday. And then once we finalize and make sure all of our numbers are good and make sure we've not made any mistakes or missed anything, we're going to have a special call meeting on September the 30th at the commissioner's office like we've done over the last couple of years to finalize and make the budget official so we can have our budget uh, finalized and ready to go for all of our staff members on October the 1st. So at this time, I'll pause and see if there's any questions or comments or concerns from anyone that's in attendance here today. Has anybody got anything? All right. We appreciate uh, the couple of folks that are here with us today. And uh, we didn't know what to expect, but we wanted to be available to the community and be able to answer any questions and, um, and be as transparent as we could about how we're investing your tax dollars. And I don't look at it as we're spending money. I don't like to spend money, but I like to invest money. And so we're investing money in our infrastructure into our services back to you, into our personnel, and everything that we need to do to, to make our county better. And so we truly approach everything as we're investing that we're not spending because anybody can spend, but it's more challenging to focus on investing and making sure we're getting return on investment in our people and our facilities and the services that we're providing. So if there's nothing else at this time, uh, we'll go ahead and adjourn our meeting. We thank you for watching this video and look forward to seeing you in the near future. And we look forward to a great uh, FY 2020, 2021 budget. And hopefully uh, we'll be right on the mark here as we've been over the last several years. And we're going to continue to reduce our debt and continue to operate within a balanced budget. So thank you. And again, appreciate y'all being here today. And that will adjourn our meeting. Thank you.